Sometimes you want to use a navigation bar on the side and this is called navigation rail and you can have here two options, one extended and the other one is not extended and that's what we want to create in this tutorial. In our build method, therefore we create first of all a navigation rail, which is exactly this widget for the sidebar. And here inside you can set the destination, which are basically all these points which you have here on this navigation bar. So you can choose here different widgets which you want to place here inside. And to do this you put here a navigation rail destination inside. Here inside you have basically two properties which you can set. So first the icon and here you set some icon inside. And you can also set a label if it is later with a label. So we can toggle it that he also shows the label. And like you can see, we also need to place here always minimum two things inside. So let's also make sure that we put here another navigation inside. And we also want to set here the selected index. So make sure to create here an int index zero. And this is then the index of the selected tab. Now we have here these two tabs and to change them we need to actually implement the on destination selected and here we get every time the index which we have selected of this tab bar and what we get then is to put this index inside of our variable here in our state and the important thing is also to refresh here our UI with the set state. And that's what we all need for our initial navigation rail. So we can already change here the icons. And this is mainly done with this navigation selected where we change here every time the index if we tap on one of these tabs. From the design perspective, this doesn't look so great because right now this is here extended. And what we want to do is we want to bring it here to the left side and make it more pretty. And therefore I simply add here first of all a color inside. So you see that this here is extended to the whole width and we want to extend it only here to the left side right now. And to bring it here to the left side, it is pretty simple. You simply wrap a row widget around and then our navigation bar will be here in a row and will be put to the start of the row here at the left side. To make this design here better, we want to change the color of our icons. So we have every time here a selected icon and many unselected items we can have. And that's what we want to change. So we change here first of all the selected icon and therefore you call here this icon scene data. And inside of it you can set a different color for the selected item. And you can also make it bigger so you can put here a size inside. And then we have here a higher size for this selected item. And next to it, we also have here this unselected icon theme. So for all the items which are unselected, we can also change it. And here we set, for example, a color with some opacity of 60% inside. And then it looks already like this. And we can also put here a higher size inside. So it looks like this. Let's also quickly change our orange color to a black color. So I take here the primary color, which is a black color of our scene. And then it already looks like this. Like you can see, we are pretty close to the example what we wanted to create. So basically we create here some more items in the list. And then we also want to switch between different kind of pages if we click on these items. And by the way, if you want to get this whole source code, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, I show you how you can become a more advanced and better developer. Let's put here more icons inside of our sidebar. So you can put here again another navigation rail destination inside. And here, for example, you set a favorite border. And then it looks like this. And even if we click here on it, every time we have the same icon, if you want to change it that the selected icon looks different, then you also have here the selected icon property where you can set the selected icon to a different icon. And now you see that we have here this full icon, which I have chosen here, the favorite one. And if we are unselected, then we have here this other icon. So this is an option what you can do with this navigation rail destination if you want to have different icons. Let's also create here our last item inside, our settings item. And now I think we are completed. The next thing what we want to look at is how we can create these labels next to our icons or we can also create these labels under our icons. And this is pretty simple. 
First of all, we create here two fields, selected color and unselected color. This will be the color for our labels and our icons, which is selected. And also for our label and icons, which are unselected, we have here the second color. Within our navigation rail, we can now set the label style. So we set here the text style with how this label should look like. And we simply create here at the top a label style, which is the style for our label, for our text here. And what we want to do here is we want to set for the selected label style for this one here, a color of white. So we put here our selected color inside, which is this white color. And we do the same thing for the unselected labels text style. So this are always these other items. And for these labels, we want to set the label style with a color of unselected color, which is then this color of the opacity. The last thing is to show then our labels and therefore we call here label type and here inside you can put for example the label type to selected which means that always the selected has only a text and then it looks like this. So the text is only for the selected item. However, you can also choose here all and then all items will have the label under this icon. And now if we switch here these items then you see also that they change every time the selected color and you can basically modify the color every time with these two fields and then you can basically change your design of your navigation bar. Now we want to add here different pages for all of our icons so that we can toggle between these pages. Right now we are here at the home page and then you can click here the favorite page for example, then we have your different images and we also have here later the other stages. So we have here this profile and settings page. To build these pages, we simply go to our row and here after we display our first navigation rail item, so this is this item here, then we want to build the pages for the remaining space and therefore we call here the build pages method, which we want to create and we put it into an expanded tag so that it gets here the whole available space to the right side. Let's create right now our different pages for each tab which we have. So we have here four tabs, like you can see, and for each one, we want to build a page. So I call here this method and we switch over the index, which is this index here at the top file. So every time if we change here, then we have here a different index from zero to one, two, three. So this is the third index. And here we want to build for every index the page which we want to have. So for zero, we want to create our home page. So I have simply created here a home page and this is like what you can put here inside. You can put here your homepage basically inside. And we also put here the other cases inside. So the third case is the settings page and between we have two other tabs where we have different pages inside. And like you can see, we already have here the settings page, the profile page, favorite, and we also have here the homepage. Let's create now this avatar here at the top. And every time if you press on this avatar, then it will expand to the full view. And if you then click here again, then it will again shrink to the normal view. To create this, we simply create here the leading property, which means at the beginning, we can create our widget here, which we want to create. And we want to put here an image inside. So I put here the ink image inside and you can then set here the width and height for this image. And then you basically set here inside your image, which you want to display. And it looks then like here a square because I have put here square sizes inside. And what you also can do is you can wrap it here inside of a material widget and inside you can set the shape. And this will then put the shape to a circle form. And now you see that we have here our image in a circle form. And now what we also want to do is if you click on this image, it should show a splash. And right now it's just not working. So what you can do is to put here inside an ink wheel and then you can put here this on tab handler inside. And what we want to do is to create here this is extended field. So is our navigation bar extended or not? And therefore I have created here at the top this is extended field, which is by default false. So our navigation bar is not extended by default. And every time if we then click on our image, then it will be extended. And it is also important to put here the set state around so that our UI gets refreshed every time if we click on this image. And now if I click here, you see that we have the splash effect and this comes exactly from this inkwell and also from this ink image, which is combined. And then you have here this 
the splash effect on this image. Now we currently toggle the field already, however we also need to make sure that this navigation bar knows that it get extended. Therefore you have in your navigation rail another field which is called extended and there we simply put our is extended boolean flag inside and this will then every time change if we click on our icon. So let's click here on our icon, our image and you should see, okay, we get here first of all an arrow. So what is here happening is that you cannot use it with a label type of all. So simply remove the label type for this example and then you see that it gets here expanded and you can then toggle here always between extended mode and the shrink mode. Sometimes you want to put your icons here inside maybe to the center or to the end and therefore you have here the group alignment and by default it is minus one which means we are here at the beginning. However if you like to center it then you can put here zero inside and then it is centered here and if you want to have it at the end then you can put here one inside and then it's going here to the end. And you also can choose basically here other values between so you have something in between of center and for example the end. All right, I have commanded this here again out. And lastly, I want to show you some specialty where you can create an animated rail widget. So if we click here on this image, we have some animation going on here. Therefore, we go here to our navigation rail and add here another property, which is called trailing. And here you can set, for example, the trailing icon, because before we had have used here the leading icon, which is at the start and the trailing icon is at the end. And here inside we can set, for example, an icon, then it looks like this. So we have here this lockout icon and then we also can set after it some text. And we also want to make sure that it is now toggling between our extended state and our not extended state. So you can put here this is extended flag inside. And for the extended state, we always have an icon with some text next to it. And for the other state, which is not extended, uh, there we only want to show an lockout icon. And now we can toggle here between the extended state and the not extended state and you see that we every time have here this icon inside and otherwise we have here also the icon and text inside. However, this doesn't look so great and what we want to do is to create here a fancy animation every time if we toggle it and then we have here a cool animation going on. Therefore, we wrap simply our trailing attribute inside of a animated rail widget, which we want to create right now. And inside of this animated rail widget, we create here our animation. So we have here on the navigation rail widget, a method which is called extended animation. And there we can put our context inside. And then we get here the animation of this railway. So if it is going up and down, there is some animation in this what we want to use. And here we got as a type property here our text and our icon or we got here our icon. And now we simply want to toggle between both of these states with our animation from this railway widget. To build this animation, we will return here an animated builder. And inside we need to set two things basically. First of all, the animation inside and then our child property which is here this icon and the text or only the icon. And to build the animation, we can call here the builder and then we can define how this animation should look like. And here we want to basically create a floating action button extended. And then we set here our child inside and we also call the is extended attribute. So now we want to make sure that we get every time the extended state or not the extended state for our button here. So this will be a button and we get here our is extended state by the animation status. So if it is currently playing or not playing and then we also put here also the color inside of our button and we also set here this on press handler. So if we click on this button you can do something. However we will not implement it right now. And lastly we also want to set here some container around with some height and also a container with some margin. And that's all what we need. So the most important thing is this is extended field. And this looks then like this. So we have here our red icon, which we have set. And every time if we toggle now between our is extended state 
then you see here there's some animation going on between. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye!